everybody. Good evening. Good evening. So good to see you. I'll get to see some of you because yes, some of you have also attended the, the middle school town hall. Um, so for those of you who attended yesterday, there might be some repeat uh, information, but, uh, but it's good to uh, gather as a community. Uh, so maybe just wait a few, for a few more seconds uh, for everybody to get through the to the weight room. Haven't seen each other in person for a long time. Uh, and we, we still want to take advantage of opportunities like this to feel like we're part of the, the community. At least we can connect face to face if possible. Uh, obviously, if you have technology issues, not a problem at all, but uh, I'd love to be able to see you uh, face to face here. Um, I want to start out by just sharing with you a little bit about the context in which we're in, uh, what, um, what might be the updates in terms of the high school uh, schedule, and then uh, and I'll keep it brief. I'll try to be as concise as possible. I know many of you know that I, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm quite worthy. I, I talk quite a bit uh, because I'm so excited to uh, give you a lot of information, but uh, I'll try to be as concise as possible. And then at the end, uh, and, and I'll give a major portion of our time together for you to to ask direct questions. And, and you can simply unmute yourself uh, to ask a question, uh, or you can, if you don't like to be on the spotlight, you can send uh, your question to the chat uh, and, uh, and we'll be able to go through that. And joining with us today is uh, Reverend Sweeney, uh, Dean of student, uh, Students in high school. And we also have uh, Rachel Fenton here, and uh, she's the acting associate dean of students uh, this year in and, uh, and a high school. And we also have Mr. Chen, who is the director of innovation uh, in our school as well. So uh, you know, you know us, and uh, we're here to serve you. Uh, start out, start out, just kind of share a little bit. Uh, we, you, we, you all know that we have a plan. Uh, during this COVID season, right, the, the, during the pandemic. And this plan was actually have been approved. Uh, the gradual sort of dimmer switch like uh, reopening plan was approved by the, the, by the county uh, all the way back in early October, I believe. And uh, we've been operating under the assumption and, and things kind of got, uh, took a step back when the shelter, uh, the shelter in place order was imposed uh, on top of the purple, purple tier condition that we were in. Nonetheless, uh, we was, we still uh, have some flexibility within that plan to do some some things, right? Uh, and uh, most recently, uh, the the state of California governor uh, have made, uh, you know, have imposed some changes. And we had gotten some updates on the on the rules and regulations, um, and this is just literally just two weeks ago. And the and the county health and education department have been busy trying to understand the implication of these new regulations. So I'm going to try to be as concise as possible to help help you understand uh, what are the key takeaway for and how that impact us. Number one. Uh, Students, uh, in order to be in, on campus, they had to be in the cohort groups. That idea in the past was uh, has this major emphasis on the size of the group, right? So, for example, if you want to bring a, a class of students into, you know, the students into a class, uh, it has to be uh, no no more than fifteen students. Uh, this new rule right now uh, no longer uh, put emphasis on the number. Um, but rather put tremendous emphasis on physical spacing. Uh, that's number one. Number two uh, is the group stability. Group stability. That means uh, you cannot uh, sh shift around. The teachers who are part of connecting with the group cannot move around either. So as long as as long as the classrooms uh, spacing allows for six feet spacing, then uh, you can max on that number of students, given the fact that they're, they stick together. Now, obviously, if the rooms are too small, then you have to adjust that number accordingly, right? Uh, so that's that's one. 
Uh, another one um, is uh, it puts tremendous emphasis on the protocol, the uh, COVID uh, risk mitigation protocol, which is face uh, face mask ought to be weared and enforced at all time, uh, frequent hand washing, um, you know, and, and so on. These these kind of things are critically important. Uh, it also puts quite a bit of uh, emphasis on facility, right? So the ventilation system has to be well uh, uh, put together. Uh, I'm happy and proud to say and be able to share with you that uh, uh, with a genius, uh, Mr. Bongarner of our, our school, uh, he was able to update all of our classrooms with a uh, really upgraded ventilation system. And I'll tell you how what that means. Uh, according to the public health uh, uh, school uh, and the Global Health Institute at Harvard, a healthy building ought to have a complete room exchange of air uh, at least four times in an hour to make it a healthy space uh, for the mitigation of COVID risk. Um, our system can exchange up to 7.5 times an hour. Uh, so that means we, we have the ability to have fresh air through, and it's not blowing air through, but rather is a gradual um, and efficient exchange of air. Uh, so that will mitigate uh, and, and minimize the, the, the airborne spread. Uh, uh, of the virus. So that, that is a good news. And uh, so I want to just give you that context. So what that means is that we, uh, at the moment, we would love to be able to begin to uh, think about how to bring students uh, back on campus safely. Now, obviously, we had to be sensitive to what's going on around us. Um, I want to start out by saying and using this analogy of marathon, right? So I. I used to run marathons. I don't anymore, but I used to run marathons. And I still remember uh, the first time I ran marathon, I was in San Diego, right? 26.2 miles. Uh, I was doing pretty good until I hit 20 mile mark, right? And if you, if you think about it, if you had run, uh, if you had run 20 miles, 6.2 more miles is really nothing, right? It's just a typical training. Uh, 6.2 miles, but goodness, when you hit 20 miles, you just feel like you just can't do it anymore. But this is what we call the wall. You hit the wall and you just can't get through it. And uh, I just want to stop. But I know that if I stop, if I just simply take a break, there's no way that I can pick up my feet again and keep running. So it is important, I think, in this season, we're in this pandemic marathon. And I think we're hitting the 20 mile mark right now. And we are tired, we're frustrated, you know, and, and so on. But it takes the whole community to encourage one another to just hang tight and, and do our due diligence and keep on having the right, uh, uh, healthy practices so that we then can continue to gradually open up our campus and invite students back onto campus. So that's really important. So in a, in a moment, I'm going to share with you our plan. Think of it this way. The plan I'm, I'm about to share with you is really uh, applicable from February 22, 22nd to April 1st. February 22nd is the Monday when we get back from the February break. I want to use that as the starting point because I want to communicate this plan to you to give, get some feedback so we have time to revise if there's some changes that need to be made based on your feedback. But we want to we want to start with February 22nd and go all the way to April 1st, which is right before the spring break. Now, we want to use the spring break uh, as a, a reset time to think about how then do we finish out the rest of the year. So if we if the our gradual reopening uh, and, and there is no 
no risk. Uh, no, I would say no risk. Uh, if we that done well and the no community spread, then we can go back and say, can we open up more days, uh, having more activities and so on and so forth, and then to finish out the year. And this is also come to come in a context of a vaccine rollout, right? So right now we pin our hope on vaccine rollout, but at the same time, we know that it is not going quite well. Uh, in fact, uh, you know, uh, you know, right now we're we're still on one tier one A uh, for those who are age uh, seventy five and older, uh, folks who are at high risk, folks who are at the front line, medical front line. Um, teachers are at the top of the the queue for tier one B. So that means once 1A is done, the teachers will be next in line. Uh, once we get that, then we will have much uh, uh, sort of a, you know, greater confidence to be, um, to, to be, uh, be able to, to offer more. So that's really the context. But right now, even without vaccine, I think with all the mitigation measure that we have, we can still be able to do more than what we've been doing. Um, a few key consideration that I want to share here. I'm, I actually, let me just go go directly to the plan. Um, here is the here is the plan. Let me see. If you look at uh, on my screen, I'll try to move a little bit over. Uh, think of it this way. Uh, we are still going to have virtual classes. That's not going to change at the moment. But what we do is that on Monday, we're just going to go ahead and bring students in onto campus for an entire day, for the entire day. And on this day, uh, students can expect to have more physical activities. They get to have leadership opportunities. They get to have clubs. Uh, they get to have office hours, which our students tend to really enjoy and really like and really need. Uh, so they can to do that. Uh, we can also set up lab and studio. Uh, in fact, this uh, this this afternoon, uh, out, you know, the outdoor education went really well, and I get to see uh, different groups, and uh, it is incredible. When I walk into the science lab and seeing students making paper and and having that lab space be populated by students uh, that was an incredible feeling that was an incredible feeling uh, so i think we can do this safely and so we'll bring them in basically the full day no not not just a couple hours but full day and bring we will be able to bring them in here and but but still continue to have virtual classes for the next four days uh, running the same schedules. Um, and we, we're going to start with that. Now, some of you may say, well, can we move that day uh, in some other days of the week? Uh, the answer right now is that, that, is, is that uh, we had to consider the middle school's knee and also elementary school's knee. So the Monday works out to be the best uh, based on all these different factors. I want to give you an idea how that bump up against all these other uh, uh, school divisions, because some of you may have uh, kids in other divisions. So I'm going to show you a different slide to show you how that works. And I'll move out of the way a little bit so you can see. Um, as you can see, for middle school, then, uh, they have a day and a half on campus. They have a day and a half on campus and elementary will continue to have three days on campus. Elementary school has been on three on campus three days a week uh, since October, uh, and it's working out really well. Uh, now we're we are giving uh, more of a, a liberty to do so for middle schools a day and a half, um, and then in you know in three week time we're gonna into this period we're gonna reevaluate to see if we can give. Uh, one additional day to the middle school to make it two and a half days uh, to finish out this this period that I talk about. 
uh, February 22nd to April 1st. Uh, high school, I'm going to continue to, to think about it as we see the constant changing uh, regulatory environment around us. Uh, so I'm not closing the book on that, but I don't want to overpromise either. So right now, I want to say that we, what we can do and promise is to have a full day of uh, on-campus experience that is reached, rich and uh, healthy and safe, uh, and uh, it won't be boring, <laughs> and, and, and so on. Um, I want to just finish out sort of what I want to talk about here, my part, uh, with a few consideration here. Uh, number one, as we're designing the, these schedules, not only for the high school, but the whole school, high school, middle school, and then fourth and fifth grade, we had to figure out how to come up with some, you know, to have a plan that is flexible uh, for people and is adaptive uh, for this constant changing conditions. You know, who knows, you know, if all of a sudden by any, you know, by a miracle that vaccine rollout turns out to be really efficient and great in the coming weeks, then then we're going to adapt and change a lot more, right? But if the, the COVID variants do turn out to be incredibly serious and difficult to deal with, then we we also have to deal with that. So so that that is a reason why we had, we had to have that adapted uh, plan. Uh, number two is that we focus on proper protocol, uh, try to be safe, right? Try to be healthy. So this plan is making sure that uh, that it is still really really safe. Uh, number three is that for uh, for a variety of reasons that there there's going to be some families that choose to opt for to stay virtually, and, and because you know, perhaps the members in the household were at higher risk categories, uh, or that the uh, you know degrees of comfort is not quite there yet, uh, so they can still continue to be remaining virtual. So on that full day experience on campus, uh, we will have option for virtual students as well. So they won't feel miss, you know, they won't be missing out. Um, number four is that this plan is really focusing on the social, emotional, and physical health of our students. Uh, we know that right now it's, it's so many months now, students are adapted to virtual learning. So as far as learning is concerned, that is is happening. But what is impacting the learning is the physical health, emotional health, and the lack of socialization. And so we need to figure out how to do that without really gets this gets tangled up with learning. Um, and teachers have been ha, had really, you know, since you know since uh, March really tried to ha, had learned how to adapt to teaching virtually and put all the resources and energy and planning into how to teach well virtually. So we don't want to mess that up by introducing, you know, additional variable where they had to figure out how to teach hybrid or have less time to teach or this and that. So we say let's focus that whole day on, on Monday to focus on uh, on all these things that I just talked about, you know, and and still be able to have um, office hours during that day. In fact, the office hour can be. Uh, in person, but you know, but at a distance. Uh, that way, hopefully, it introduce a healthy dynamic between students and teachers as well. Uh, and also, I know that for freshmen, uh, they really need to get to know each other. Uh, they really never gotten to know each other in that sense, like as if you know, a community that is physically present. Uh, so uh, having that will be very, very healthy for them. Uh, number five is that on campus lunch uh, will be available to to well, I put that that there uh, put it there for purchase that is applicable to uh, to middle school and high uh, and elementary school because they are here they are on campus uh, more than one day. But for high school students, that one lunch that your student your kids gonna have. It's on the school, so you don't have to pay, you don't have to worry about it. It's on us. You don't have to pack lunch for them. You don't have, you don't need them to bring lunch money. They come, we'll provide for them, uh, provided that you uh, pre-order. <laughs> so, so Mr. Chen is gonna, you know, can can speak on that a little bit later on as to the process of pre-ordering. 
Uh, so on Monday, you send your kids to school, full day, lunch is covered. You just need to worry about dropping them off, picking them up, and we'll be all set. Um, last couple points, very important. Parental responsibility and student responsibility. In order for us to do all these things, we do this under the umbrella of the plan that we, that's being approved by the county. So any violation of that or any time when there's a community spread of virus, we will have to shut it down, right? And so that means that we are all responsible and we have to make sure that uh, we can ensure more of this will happen. In fact, if we do this well, we add more days onto the campus, right? Um, give you an example of a Monta Vista Christian School in Watsonville uh, by Santa Cruz County, in Santa Cruz County. The head of school is a close friend of mine and they have, you know, for the past several weeks, they've been trying to open up the schools. Uh, but what happened is, is that two days ago, uh, my friend had to shut down the middle school because there were some cluster of cases that happened. So he had to shut down the middle school for two weeks. And that, that is, you know, very discouraging. We don't want to do that. So, so that means that uh, we need to do our part. Uh, parents, please, at home, reinforce the consistent public health messages at home. Uh, in terms of your family practices and socialization, uh, if you have a stable group of families and friends and relatives that you interact, make sure that that is stable uh, so that uh, it's not, you know, it doesn't, it, it doesn't introduce uh, additional risk, uh, you know, because you don't want that risk to get propagated into our, the, the, the school community and so on. So that's, that's very important. Uh, and, and students need to, they, they, they have their responsibilities too. You know, they, they come to school and follow the rules, but that rules will should, should continue uh, if, if they decide to after school to walk down to the, to the, to the local dairy, <laughs> you know, that, 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 you know, they still need to make sure that they don't congregate and they don't, you know, they, they wear the mask and all that stuff because uh, we don't want, to jeopardize our opportunity to keep opening up our school. We, we, our, our momentum is to go in that direction, to put, invite students back um, so that we can gradually move to our normalcy. Um, so that's all I have here. And, and I, I just want to say that I'm excited to, uh, about the possibility of having more of those kind of things uh, together and uh, uh, with your help. We, we can do this, uh, and I'm hopeful that we can do this well. Uh, so I want to open up for comments and questions. And I know some of you have, uh, when you register, <laughs> you have, you know, you type in some uh, comments and questions and, and we can get to them as well. But anybody, you know, right now you can just sim simply unmute yourself and, and ask away. We're here to, to uh, serve you. Don't be shy. <laughs> we have a question in the chat box that asks, what are anticipated start and end times for the Mondays on campus? Uh, so <laughs> Rachel, perhaps that's a, <laughs> maybe you and Jim can uh, answer that question. We have preliminary uh, schedule that's right. planned. That's so the, the, the preliminary schedule, and we haven't finalized it because we're still making some adjustments, but it, it runs basically uh, kind of like this. Um, we are going to um, start school pretty much like around, we're contemplating around 8.30 in the morning, and we're going to begin with an hour and 15 minute period in which um, our science teachers who have endured now almost a year of uh, science with no laboratories, uh, which is a pretty tall order uh, doing it at home, are going to have the ability to teach laboratories in a safe way on campus using our science labs. So between, again, very fluid on the times, 8.30 to 9.45-ish, 
um, we'll have a, a period in which um, we will designate uh, students to be able, who wish to participate in laboratory uh, work to come into the labs and work with their science teachers. Uh, we'll also during that period for students that don't have a science class or don't have a lab, uh, we're gonna have our first um, period during that time of office hours. And we are working diligently uh, within the parameters of the county guidelines uh, to try to facilitate, fingers crossed, and uh, through the grace of God, live office hours uh, where we can socially distance the student and the teacher, but have them, God willing, face-to-face -face contact and be able to actually interact in person outdoors. Uh, since we have this wonderfully large, beautiful open campus, and the weather permitting, as it was today, we would do that outdoors. We would then have um, an activity period um, of either a duration of either two hours for outdoor activities like outdoor ed, sports, intramural. We want to get the students together, but we'd like to get them outside and moving uh, and getting some exercise and and um, you know get back into the moving their bodies together. Uh, or for the other group, we would have a one hour activity period in which there would be uh, club activities, perhaps uh, enrichment activities. Um, uh, again, perhaps if, if, if it warrants um, some type of live instruction. Again, as, as Dr. Chen indicated, uh, we have to keep the, 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 the groups stable. We can't like break out, but we can break into subgroups within that stable group. So we're, we're playing with various ideas and concepts as to how we might do that. That shorter activity group uh, will have then an additional hour of time to either study or meet with teachers personally, more office hours. Why? Because our, our, our students keep telling us they love office hours. They love to be able to talk to the teachers. They love to be able to interact. They love to be able to get help. Um, the, our teachers like it. Uh, so we're going to, you know, we're, we're listening to what the kids are telling us. So we're going to do that. We'll then have uh, lunch periods that are staggered so that we can um, set up the service, serve the lunch, um, do it in a way that is, again, consistent with the guidelines the county has put in place. And then um, we'll do the staggered lunch, strike the service, clean up, do a second lunch service for the other group. And then in the afternoon, we'll do exactly the same thing, only it'll flip. The group that had the two hour session in the morning will have the one hour and the office hours in the afternoon. And the group that had the one hour in the morning will have the two hours of live activity in the afternoon. And then we'll cap the day at the end of the day. And this is probably the part the kids don't like is if we uh, are going to, we wanna use that a period of time, 45 minutes or so to give our faculty the chance to administer God forbid, live exams uh, once again, so that students can actually take tests uh, and we can actually do real live assessments, uh, which um, they're probably not too happy about, but I know our faculty is probably pretty relieved about that. So that's the concept. Um, that's kind of what we're, we're working with. Why are we kind of hedging? Because we're still looking at all those regulations, making sure we're, we're within the, forest, the, the, the lines, uh, that we're doing it correctly. Um, we've, we really have, uh, through really the good work of Mr. Chan in particular, great relationships with the health department and the education department. We wanna keep those relationships productive and, and positive uh, and cooperative. So uh, we're taking our time to make sure we're doing that. And that's, uh, that's what we want. The key is this, uh, we wanna provide a day that students will wanna come and participate. Um, we want them to sort of say, wow, today is Monday. I'm going to be back on campus. This is great. I'm going to see my friends. I got a lot of good stuff I got to do. I'm going to get to work with Ms. Barron. I'm going to get to talk to Mr. Ghosh. Um, I'm going to get to work on uh, a project and I'm going to see Mrs. Fenton. We want them to be able to sort of say, this is, they're looking forward to it. And, and because right now, a lot of inertia has set in and students are, they're kind of comfortable rolling out of bed at 8.30 with the blanket, flipping on the computer. Um, that gets pretty cozy. Um, we have to kind of get them out of that 
comfort zone uh, and get them back on campus and moving their bodies and interacting with one another and realizing that, you know, school's gonna restart here, whether it's this semester or next semester, we're all gonna eventually be back on campus full time. So, um, you know, we gotta start someplace. It, it will be an adjustment for students for sure. This morning when I looked, I saw a group of students who were doing nature photography and they were, you know, walking up and down the campus on those hills. And some boys were on their flip-flops, right? Because <laughs> they're in their pajama and flip-flop, uh, learning how to, how to adjust back to the, the normal school life. Uh, our cohorting, the way we, uh, is, is health department, as you say, the, the term cohort is so 2020 now. Uh, it's not cohort, it's a stable group. And uh, so the way we develop stable group is by the, the class, by the grade, grade level. So a ninth grade will be a stable group uh, and 10th grade will be a stable group. So within the ninth grade, we can do a lot more things with them. and. Uh, and, and, and still fall uh, within the, the county guideline. Uh, we had uh, a question here, probably chat to me, uh, if the state moves to a lower tier, would the school be able to bring the students on campus for more days per week and how quickly would it happen? I think the answer is yes. Uh, uh, if the tier begin to drop, um, then we will be able to, to do more. Uh, but usually, based, based on my understanding of the tier system, is that it, this, the county has to stay at a lower, at a particular tier for two weeks before we can implement a plan. So that's a really important point. Is so today, if it goes to orange, then we had to wait two weeks before we can implement a plan that is suitable for orange. Um, so another question here is. Uh, can we find documentation listing some family student responsibility restriction on travel? Now, our current plan that was approved by the county is on our website, on our school website uh, under COVID, and I believe it's still at the headline. You click on it, it will, uh, the PDF, uh, you can actually download the PDF of the document. Uh, but I do want to say uh, this is interesting, uh, just highlighting the travel. Uh, we want to start this plan on campus that Monday after the February break. So I will Im encourage those of you who want to who really wish to have your kids to try, uh, participate in the on campus experience, uh, then you have to make adjustment if you already have a you know, travel plan. And you know, right now it is not all that safe to travel. So I would encourage you not to do that. Uh, uh, Anyhow, just just a good, healthy public health practice. Um, but but do know that uh, we are still going to use the daily app to be able to screen um, the eligibility of the students to be able to show up on campus. Um, and we're gonna we you know honor system. We're gonna trust you, and you know, and this is important. We always have that share responsibilities. Uh, by the way, I I don't know if you know, uh, teachers are required to. Uh, fill up that app every single day, even though when we don't have uh, on-campus uh, activities, they still have to do that because that way we get, can have a big picture of the overall trend of the health of our faculty. Uh, will there be mandatory quarantine required, required for students and teachers who will travel during the winter break? Uh, the, answer, <laughs> the answer is yes. The answer is yes. Uh, it, it's a mandatory quarantine. Uh, so it, it's a mandatory Swain. quarantine for 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 everybody in the state. Yeah. Um, it's not just for teachers. So anybody yeah. who travels out of state and returns to California is required by law to to quarantine for ten days. Yeah. So uh, and teachers are no exception, nor are students. And yesterday at the middle school town hall, I think I gave an outdated information. I say 14 days. Uh, right now, uh, the updated information is 10 days. So, uh, other questions that you may have?
uh, one question here is what is the latest we've heard about teachers being eligible for vaccines? Um, well, uh, the vaccine situation in California is, um, how shall I put it charitably? Not particularly well managed is the word I would use. Um, and um, my brother who is a physician in Arizona was telling me this weekend that they are already at vaccination tier 1D as in David. Uh, teachers are at tier 1B. And I was told, I called on, obviously on behalf of our staff uh, to Kaiser, which handles most of our healthcare plans for our employees and was told uh, it's in, it, there is no definite date as to when vaccination um, activities will move to tier 1B as in Bob, which is where we are teachers. And when that does happen, uh, we can expect delays of, of several weeks at a minimum before they'll start scheduling. So realistically, um, you know, unless there is an, a major change and honestly, the qualification of the Johnson & Johnson single shot vaccine could be a schedule game changer as apparently there's about 200 million doses ready to ship right now, um, which could, could increase the, the, the timeline substantially depending on how they, how they choose to distribute it and whether or not you know, the government in California, which is I think ranked number 48 or 49 in, in vaccine administration, uh, gets it out to dis distribution. So uh, very uncertain. I would say this, I think it's very unlikely we'll have the faculty fully immune by vac vaccine before the end of the semester, realistically. We're certainly not planning on it. I mean, we're gonna encourage people to get it as soon as possible, but as soon as possible is really a big open question right now. Right, right. And, and right now, you know, uh, obviously we're hopeful for vaccine, but we are re our reopening plan is to say that how can we continue to open safely uh, in the absence of vaccine, right? So, and, and CDC put out a, uh, a, you know, and a statement saying that, you know, school can open uh, with all the mitigation measures um, without still without vaccine and obviously vaccine will be much will provide us more uh, greater degrees of confidence. Um, um, you may have questions about uh, athletics. I, I do want to yeah, I see Coach B is here, our high school athletic director here. Um, we can spotlight uh, Ms. Uh, Coach Bermuda. Uh, but I do want to say that uh, uh, you, right now we have been officially in the purple tier. Uh, and so the one sport that we can do is cross country. Uh, so, so uh, I think we may be able to, and I think uh, maybe Coach B or Miss Miss Aris may be sending out a notice or information, more information to the students, uh, to the families about that. Uh, I think we may be able to start practicing uh, very soon. Uh, during the winter break, we will be, we already have the bulldozer uh, rented and all that. We're going to be creating a fire trail on the hillside of our campus, and that would double as a cross-country uh, course uh, for, for the runners. So that's going to be an exciting uh, development for us. Uh, Coach B, you want to you wanna say a few words about athletics? Sure. Good evening, everybody. Yeah. Um... So I came a little bit late, actually, we're in a league meeting regarding cost country. So I um, um, jumped over here to be able to share with you guys. Um, yes, yeah, so we, we are excited that we're going to be able to get some things started here shortly. Uh, myself and Miss Ayers will be working tomorrow. Hopefully by tomorrow we can get out. Um, she's still in that meeting. So get out the exact details and see when we can start some training. Um, our goal right now, especially since so many um, of our students have really not been doing much of anything um, is to try to turn this cross country season into not a as much as like oh it's cross country or you know some people don't like to run turn it more into like hey we want everybody to just get out there be active start start doing something even if you're not a quote unquote runner you can still start to get active and encourage them all to get out there so that when their sport gets to go they're actually kind of ready as well so we want to use this preparation for for the the hope that we'll start moving some tiers here um at some point soon hopefully um 
one of our, our goals though for this coming rest of the semester is that um, seeing that our spring sports last year were the ones that got cut real short, um, particularly the baseball and softball, um, where they only had like two games or something. Um, and seeing that those sports are actually categorized in the red, which is just one tier away, the hope would be that by, you know, mid another month or so, or by April 1st, hopefully at the latest, we, we get to move a tier and we'd be able to try to have competition for our baseball and softball players. So um, the other sports that we offer um, are in either orange, like soccer or volleyball, or yellow, which is basketball. Now, you know, who's to say exactly, as we've seen over these last many months, when we go up or down, but those definitely would seem to be less likely that we could make them to there. Um, but you never know. Um, last week, we went from a stay at home to no stay at home like that. So you just never quite know. But we're going to be planning on really trying to let those um, traditional spring sports get in, if at all possible, since they lost the full season last year. Um, but yes, more details to come. Happy to answer any specific questions you guys have and then as best as I can. So. Um, do we have any, uh, while Coach B is on spotlight right now, do we have any more questions regarding sports, athletics, and all that? I, I know on my queue, I have a few other uh, kind of questions that's not related to athletics, but I'll, I'll make sure I get to them as well. Uh, any at the okay, moment? I, in I see one that came through regarding meets this year. So that was what we were just discussing right now that, um, I'll say it's yes and no, because no in the fact that they won't look like they did, whereas this huge meet with the whole league is coming together and we have hundreds of kids out there. But yes, we're discussing having just like a dual meet, so like a competition against one other school. Um, and our goal would be that we're just going to do it um, on our campus, just around the lower level. I know Dr. Chen mentioned, and yes, we're very excited that we have this start of uh, potential of getting ourselves a, a course across the street, but um, I don't believe we're going to be able to have that all ready for this time right now. Hopefully by summer and training for the fall, we can really utilize that more. Um, but for now, we're thinking of more flat course, you know, use our field, go around the Lindemar campus, take several loops as we, as we mark it out just to get them out there running and hopefully be able to do that against one additional school so they they kind of have that little competition thing too so that's going to be our goal we're going to hope to get two or three of those in um not till after the winter break we won't we won't be doing any meets prior um but hopefully we'll get two or three of those um, most likely on a saturday um seeing that we need to uh have the use of the full campus and and just travel and it just you know it just makes it a little bit better so that's what we're looking at now and um yeah, hopefully that'll all come together. Pretty excited. One one thing I want to mention, even though this uh, is not a question, but I actually been asked you know, in in other okay on other occasions, is is the usage of our gym, uh, given the fact that it's a uh, really a large space, and uh, can we do safe activities, physical activities there? And I've been sort of pushing for that, but what happened is that as as a team, we study the regulations under the purple tier, which there is, we just were not allowed to even do anything in the gym. Uh, if we do that, we risk losing uh, the ability to continue to open and invalidate our plan. So um, so we are very careful with that. Uh, so, you know, that's why you're not seeing <laughs> our students out there shooting basketball or anything like that in, in, in the gym. Uh, if, if there's anything, then there will be a, uh, outdoor. Um, other athletic related uh, questions. Well, thank you so much, Coach B. Appreciate it. Uh, no I want to go problem. into really quickly. So sorry, there is one question that just got sent to me privately. Um, what okay. would be some regulations within baseball for practice and competitions if it starts? Do we have any? Right. So competition for baseball, softball, those sports, competition can start in the red. 
tier. Um, so uh, the goal and plan will be um, kind of keep with the what was the original date. So right mid March would hopefully be when we could start practicing. Um, so um, that would be the goal right now. Try to start those sports in a, approximately a little over a month from now. Great, thank you. There's a question about, uh, because elementary school, uh, the particularly fourth and fifth grade uh, classes have been meeting on campus three times in, uh, a week uh, since October. Uh, it, it's actually been going quite well. We don't have any issue there uh, because I think, uh, you know, with all the mitigation um, measures that we put in uh, has worked out quite well. Uh, we are, the trend is that uh, majority of the, the students have been on campus uh, uh, and only about a handful um, on, a, on a, any given day stay virtual. Um, some really consistently stay virtual because their uh, their comfortability level, um, but a few uh, because uh, teachers have been uh, so good at, at doing sort of having just a few people on virtual and using our technology to be able to uh, attend to both on campus students and virtual people. That even when you know a, a kid had a sniffle and decided to stay home and whatnot, they can continue to join in without any disruption or you know in their learning so that's worked out quite well uh, we don't have any uh, known issue uh, there um, so so right now we are as a school as a whole we are have been fortunate without uh, that that we're we don't have any community spread we have cases of exposure uh, and we, our COVID response team have been very diligent on to to contact trace and to impose uh, quarantine and so on. So that's that's has happened, and uh, uh, parents of the affected uh, group have been informed and all that. So that's 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 being uh, done quite well. Uh, I, I think our biggest issue has been the post Christmas. Post Christmas, we had some, uh, you know, known cases of uh, ex you know, you know, so, you know, exposure, and we had to impose quarantine and all that stuff. So, uh, is Pape considering any type of uh, testing, whether it's asymptomatic and symptomatic testing? Uh, Two, 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 two levels on that. For, for faculty, we are required uh, to have our entire staff uh, tested once a month, uh, once a month. So that's been going on. In fact, this, this week has been the COVID testing week. So uh, our, our fac faculty and staff have been you know, trying to get appointment and, and get tested. So that's been going on. And we actually had to report that to the county uh, and so we, we had to be in compliance of that. So that's happening already. Uh, for as for as for as for, as far as for students is concerned, uh, the the county has made a, a statement that they even admitted that they made a, a strong recommendation, uh, but shy of a requirement to test students. Uh, they did say that they want to put emphasis on the cadences of the student testing, but they know that uh, it's not practicable, uh, easily practicable. So right now, our pack-based response as our, our strategy has been uh, 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 sort of responsive testing strategy, meaning when whenever there is any, whether it's symptoms or exposures or anything that we red flag, then we ask, you know, then, then we will impose sort of the testing requirement. Okay, so that's, 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 uh, that's where we are at right now. Um, oh, we, we got more, <laughs> we got more. We got more questions coming up with the uh, with athletics. There's there's a question about summer school. Oh, summer uh, school. Yes. 
what is our, do we have plans for summer school this year versus a normal year? We hope so. We hope so. We, we, we were able to provide summer school opportunity, uh, you know, but virtually, uh, we probably would do the same thing. Uh, so, so that, that will be, uh, that will be the next uh, task that we'll be talking about. Uh, and, and truth be told, we have not, uh, put that much, uh, time at the moment of leading up to this moment to, to talk about the summer plan yet. Uh, but it has been on the docket uh, to to make sure that we can provide that. Uh, so right now, a lot of our energy is putting into how to open up the campus. Uh, but we we would like to be able to 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 have classes. You know, I think it's it, it's really right now the mat what uh, what's for us is really just a matter of be able to uh, have the available teachers to carry out those courses. Jim, you want to say a few more because I think you uh, really ran the right the summer I, session. Yeah, I mean the um, we we want to do that. Um, it's something that not only is is helpful for uh, the students, but it's I think for some students it's really been a, it, it's almost essential. So um, we're going to do it. Um, the problem we run into very honestly is with with the sort of being specific on the logistics is. Um, the regulations and the and the parameters change so quickly that but that that between now and June is like an eternity. It may it literally may be a completely different uh, set of, of operating guidelines will be will be governed by by them. We just don't know. So um, one way or another, we'll have a summer program. I think that's pretty clear. What it's going to look like um, is going to be somewhat fluid, unfortunately, through no fault of our own. It's just the the parameters in which we exist. For example, just two weeks ago, they just published a whole new set of guidelines that Dr. Chen was just talking about. The 15 person per group limitation went away all of a sudden, so which changes everything. So it, it's very, very uh, fluid situation at the moment, but the, the big picture, yes. Yeah. You know, uh, with the five minutes remaining in our, our time together, um, I, we have presented a plan that is subject to continual revision, revision and we want to be able to uh, also incorporate your feedback as well. Can you? Can I just get a sense of how you feel and what you think about what we have at the moment? I know that this is not, you know, it opening up the canvas entirely uh we're one step uh, moving in toward that direction but i just want to get a sense of that is this something that you guys you were want your kid to participate is this is this something that is worth the the effort to make sure we go in this direction can can i just if if this is Okay, <laughs> I get some thumbs the up. Here. There's a if you hit the reaction button on the bottom, there's a yes or no option that we can see. Okay, great. So, yeah, and and you know we we want to make sure that it's worth your while uh, and 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 the students' while to make the effort to come on to the campus, right? You know, and um, and I think encouragement. Uh, it is that uh, we, we want to make sure that they have the incentive to to come and know that and, and also the confidence to know that it's safe uh, and, and and we want to do everything we can in our power to make it happen other other comments questions? Uh, there's a question here with the rules going back and forth. I personally like to wait until things are calmer. That's a comment. Yeah, no, I, you know, I totally understand that as, as well. Absolutely. And that's why our plan is to make sure that it has the flexibility, uh, to, for you to choose, uh, whether it's kind of stay put, uh, or to, to, uh, to participate in a Monday on campus uh, full day activity. 
I just received a question asking about what are the volunteer opportunities for COVID like? Uh, maybe either Vince and Jim can uh, take that question. Sure. Um, at this time, uh, we're, we're not taking volunteers on campus. It's to help uh, reduce um, um, any complexities that may come up with having multiple um, people on campus. And also is to help us to be able to maintain stable groups. Uh, we can't introduce, even with the teachers, we have to keep them fixed with each group. So uh, we'd like to uh, be able to say that our groups are very stable and provide the safest environment. Um, for volunteering uh, right now, uh, like yesterday, the middle school, some of the parents were asking about uh, PPE. Um, we could, you know, we have a lot of gloves, masks, uh, hand sanitizers, but as we have students coming on campus more, uh, we have wash stations around campus, but, you know, hand sanitizer is uh, uh, something you can carry with you or the students can carry with them and we can provide. So if you want to donate that, or um, if your child can bring their own hand sanitizer, just a personal one, then they can always have it with them. And it's an extra layer of protection that we, you know, that you could help uh, us with as well. Yeah, thank you. Here's a question that says, there are many private schools that are fully opened in the North Bay and South Bay. I have friends that have their kids in person for the past three months. How are different schools doing full-time in person and Pac Bay is not? Um, I can answer that question. We are in San Mateo County and San Mateo County has jurisdiction over our operation through the state education code. And San Mateo County does not permit full operation in the, within the, the, the boundaries of the county. Um, that's, that's the answer, I'm sorry. Yeah, I think, you know, this is the nature of our, um, <laughs> the Bay Area, right? You know, different county operates slightly differently and there's a weight of emphasis on different things. Um, and again, you know, we, we want to be able to provide the right kind of environment for our students, uh, providing them the right incentive. Um, you know, so again, that's, you know, we're, we're going to do our best to continue to make sure that uh, our students can learn well and still, uh, we can still attend to their social, emotional, and physical need, and uh, and we're doing our best to make it possible. So, you know, I want to thank you for your support and be able to take the time to come and connect with us. And uh, you know, we want to be fully transparent and how we do things, and we want to continue to have the humility to listen to your feedback and continue to revise our plan to make this a, uh, you know, a great experience for everyone. So thank you so much for your support and your help. Um, so with that, thank you so much and uh, have a wonderful evening. Appreciate you taking the time to be here. Bye-bye.